Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there, welcome back. So we wanted to just comment on some things that happened after we made the video yesterday, it went up on EU Arts. Actually, you know, what's interesting too is that video took forever to process. And when they do that, it's because they're filtering it and they're also putting it in so it's gonna be harder for people to find. And they're just basically trying to depress the viewers. Uh, from looking at it at all and the reason why is because it, it's talking all about our own individual freedoms and we are supposed to be able to freely explore all this manifest universe and the unmanifest universe freely not like what we have on planet earth so after we had made the video put it up we did some mantras before going to do another video to clear the air, clear the energy. And Babaji came through and Babaji's come through a couple of times in the past. And Babaji is thought to be an incarnation of Shiva. And he is said to reside in Mount Kailash, which is uh, a, actually we've done a video on Mount Kailash as well, asking is this Shiva's abode. Is this even really a mountain or is this some sort of gigantic spaceship? And Babaji is said to be an immortal and in some traditions he's actually said to have been perhaps one of the more important teachers of Yeshua. As Yeshua in those quote-unquote lost years, he transversed the globe. He went everywhere. He was exploring and and learning and growing and really that's all life is about is exploring learning and growing it's not being in some sort of service to some particular deity the the way that we are in service to source is in that we be ourselves that simple be yourself think for yourself explore yourself come to know yourself mm -hmm. And I completely understand there is a safety in allowing other people to give you your understanding, allowing other people to tell you what this means, what that means, because then you have somebody to stand next to and say, well, yeah, but this person taught me, you know, if, if something goes wrong. But I think it's really important to explore yourself and not let any one teaching or any one understanding define who you are so that's the scary part about stepping out on your own it's like well what if i make a mistake what if i am wrong well if we make a mistake and you are wrong you've probably learned a whole lot of things that are far more valuable than just going by the book of what somebody else teaches now you've now you've gained wisdom wisdom is what we strive for yeah, again, we could we could memorize all sorts of things. We could have PhDs and degrees. And really all we're learning is things that others are telling us to basically saturate our consciousness with. What are we truly learning? Again, if we're studying science, science is always being rewritten. How about medicine? Again, now we're seeing how <laughs> just how the medical community really has been misguided in so many ways that it's coming to the forefront of so many people's consciousness when we look at things in a very very dogmatic way and again dogma is is like doctrine and doctrine is indoctrination these things go hand in hand really it's 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 absorbing and accepting somebody else's views on reality when we look to each, every single snow flake that ever falls from the sky, no two are exactly alike. That's on purpose. There's a reason for that. Because while there are certain patterns in nature, there is a uniqueness to every individual. And that's beautiful. That's one of the most beautiful things there is. Source is exploring, source is creation through every single possible avenue from every single possible perspective so again we we should try not to judge uh so much and it's very easy to judge um certain beings on this planet when they restrict 
others from fully exploring who they are by telling them they have to do something you know and we all we've gone through all those dates for men and now we're seeing uh chaos out in the streets in many places because of the supreme court ruling again everything's going to break down in this time period every single structure we see is going to be shattered it has to be this paradigm this matrix that we're living in is so antithetical to source's original plan how many of you have ever worked a job where you're told this is what you must say not like roll with it you know be feel free but you're given scripts to go through even when you know you sound kind of like a cyborg a robot doesn't sound legitimate because it's not your actual feelings. You have to adapt to the feelings and the impressions that they want to give. And this society is just trying to create more clones, more Borg members, without allowing the individual to express themselves. There's this, this need to control and to get people to conform. When the individuality is the thing, the uniqueness, that's the thing that should be so uplifted and appreciated and supported. Every single one of us has different perspectives from the other. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and there's so many different, say, positions in life, jobs in life that, that I tried to do. And every time there was some kind of a policy or procedure that I was supposed to adhere to, I never did well. I always screwed everything up. It was guaranteed. But if you give me a project and you tell me, okay, you figure it out, I excelled. And I know a lot of you are like that too. People don't like to be watched over their shoulder. They like to be given free reign so that they can expand. And I think the reason for that is because that's our natural state. Yeah, exactly. We, we are meant to explore in our own unique way in our own perspective make our own judgments so when we are indoctrinated into any sort of um, religious beliefs any sort of dog dogmatic viewpoint and accept something that somebody else has given as their experience and it might not even be their experience it might not even be the person before them it might not be secondhand evidence might not be tertiary it, it could be something that never even happened because it's been you know rewritten so many times it's not even close to the actual facts yet people spend their lives memorizing it and then taking it and living by it when they're not necessarily being honest with themselves and they're not allowing themselves to explore their own thoughts and feelings by accepting the thoughts feelings and perspectives of others mm -hmm. and this is done in in so many ways through so many different systems again you know if we look to islam it means to submit to submit to what to submit to the will of god who says so well um it's the will of god given by allah to his servant muhammad how do you really know were you there did you listen word to word and you transcribed it do you understand the arabic and you know, again, how do you really know it even happened? The reality is you don't. Now, if you're able to remote view, you might be able to see some things. And, you know, Cindy has remote viewed. And, you know, again, we get that it's just another controller control system. Because, again, they want to make everybody in this world kind of fit into a particular mold. This is a one-size-fits-all world when it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be a world in which uniqueness is explored, embraced, and, and you know, it's something that it should be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, just like our children, we do encourage them to explore. You know, you might give them um, some, some tools to use their senses, you know, like finger painting, um, you know, tasting different foods. Have you ever watched a child maybe taste a lemon for the first time? these things are so expansive and just because we become adults that doesn't mean we should stop exploring with our senses we should just dive in deeper a belief system is a tool it can be a very important tool 
as long as it's it's not so dogmatic or restrictive that it keeps us from growing because the purpose of life is exploration and growing this is why we come in here to learn new lessons to explore new things it's that simple this reality is created for consciousness which is eternal consciousness is eternal the body is not to have a temporary experience in the 3D, where everything is pretty intense. Everything is kind of heavy and weighty, and it's very much different than our normal state of being. So when we look at what's going on in the world today, and we look at people, how they're, they're acting or reacting to things that are in the mainstream media, they are behaving with their best knowledge, with their best understanding, with their they think they're using their best selves and this is through a belief system that is this is a restricting kind of belief system and one day i i feel many of these people are going to wake up and they're going to say oh boy you know what what did i do what did i participate in but right now they just can't see it they can't see the forest for the trees because they're doing something what they think is so so right and it's proper and it's the way things are to be done and look how much destruction is in that yeah and of course we know the orders maintain the the powers that be the controllers maintain order through chaos this is how they do it and they also get every unique individual that goes ahead and believes what they're given that accepts a paradigm accepts a, a belief structure that is given by them and just goes along with it without ever questioning they're basically giving their whole purpose to their being away without knowing so this is the message we get from the guides that's really the most important one it goes back to that biblical quote that has so many people confused where it says ye are gods don't you know you are gods and there's, there's reasons why this is so important. Because again, each one of us is a creator. The human experience is a temporary experience. We're more than human. We're not just human. We're consciousness. We're having an experience in this human body, this vehicle. But we've had other experiences in the past and we'll have other ones in the future. Or we should, if the natural order of things is allowed. So this is just an opportunity for growth and exploration. It's not basically an opportunity, unfortunately, for others to control you, as is the case in this matrix, where they want you to conform. And we see it time and time again, where people, they say things so automatically, which doesn't give truth. Like, for instance, quoting biblical passages, and as if they're you know stating a great truth but really they're just showing that they're very good parrots and they're not necessarily thinking for themselves they're just regurgitating things that have been impressed and indoctrinated into their minds and and this could go along with any line of thinking even an atheistic point of view where you think that this is all there is and and again that's very very sad because the reality is you know this is supposed to be our playground a playground to explore with. We should always be like little children exploring and enjoying. That's the, that's the nature of things that we were never meant to lose. That every day is a sacred day. Every day is an opportunity to learn something new and do something fun. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and just, you know, you just look at our children to kind of get an understanding of how, how should we be behaving. Everything we learn in kindergarten is really those are very powerful tools you know be nice to other people put your stuff away very basic information but then allowing yourself to explore and play should be on the agenda allowing ourselves to reach new understandings you know why do we always have to color in the lines you know why do we have to go by these rules and those rules could you imagine what if what if we were able to look at our children and see their strong points and raise them through that we would have some people who are just the absolute most experts at 
any given subject you know it, it might be hunting and gathering it might be cooking it might be training it might be gardening but they would be absolute top of their path if they were guided in the direction where they were strongest at so you know developing your own belief system should be an ongoing process it should be something that as you learn and discover new things for yourself it changes and grows if we're locked into one sort of paradigm in which we never alter our perception we're not really being true to the higher self because the higher self is here to love to learn to love and to grow so when we're locked into a particular paradigm and there's no more opportunity for growth then there's really no purpose in this life and that's so sad they have taken it and twisted it so that we end up serving their needs and giving away our power and our free will think about how many hours you work in a week just to pay the taxes just to pay the mortgage the rent and and what are they doing they're creating an artificial environment of inflation artificial shortages why just to stress you out more to get you ready to accept something that you wouldn't accept if things were the way they were before all these things started happening they they want to take even more they will keep taking more but they will never be happy because they have lost the whole concept and purpose of life in the first place and it doesn't matter how much you accumulate if you're not enjoying the ride what's the purpose what's the point if you're not sharing love because if if source ultimately is love then obviously you know love is not demanding and you know i don't care what anybody says love doesn't de matter demand that a person change in order for that love to to stay Love is accepting. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you want to stay in an abusive relationship or you want to, you know, be a partner to somebody that's doing horrible things or, um, you know, killing themselves with all sorts of substances. Not in that sense, but, but love in the sense that we accept people the way they are and recognize that each one of us is unique. And that's there's a reason for that because each one of us is a unique aspect of source exploring source mm -hmm. right a accepting the beauty in other people accepting that uniqueness and also appreciating it you know there's there's a way you can harness belief systems to make them work um you know the controllers that we have they have harnessed belief systems and they have pointed people in a certain direction and all they need to do is just let go, give them some funding, give them some tools and they're gonna do the dirty work for them. And that's a really restrictive way to live. But when you allow someone to be and explore and see what they like and even join them, you know, accept them in the things that they enjoy, you know, finding your joy, how many people really go after their their joy these days instead they're looking at okay what are you going to do for a living and you have these things to to look to and then you have to go to a school to learn how to do them so we can be batteries so we can run a system for someone else that really we don't have the heart in it but they have the drive so they're going to train us to fulfill their wants needs and desires and we should be free beings working with each other on a level that is um probably very rarely seen these days that should be common practice that we work together in an accepting way to help each other build and grow and heal wherever needed healing the generations is really important too because there's a lot of um, generational abuse that's going on and looking at the looking at the main part of the problem instead of just taking that person aside and saying they're bad well what about what about let's finding out why they got bad let's start healing that lineage let's heal that line and then in doing so heal humanity absolutely you know what's what is our purpose ultimately we are all creators this is this is what is meant by this ye are gods you are creators because isn't God the creator of everything? Uh, that's how we're brought up thinking. 
uh, that God is the creator. And we have, of course, certain beings that have usurped uh, the actual creator and tried to portray themselves as the creator, even saying that they created us. But in reality, source is within us. So, you know, the most high power that there is lies within every one of us. So that basically makes us equal, different, but unique. And that's the whole point. So, you know, there, if you want to talk about the most high God, per se, you're not talking about anything other than the ultimate source of which we're all a part and which resides in us. So again, you know, it's, it isn't. It's the exact opposite when you hear that thy will be done. Okay, well, you could rephrase that in terms of the higher self because we each do have a higher self, that part of us, that aspect of us, that is not just the part that's having this temporary 3D experience, the, the eternal soul part, the consciousness part that is, is basically incarnating, but is beyond this incarnation. And we'll have many incarnations, countless incarnations is really the norm. That part, well, what's that will? Because again, we, we do come in to explore and learn, but often there's a, a theme. There's something that we've maybe not been able to completely grasp in other past lives that we're in here to, to grasp, to understand, to learn, to explore, to go through in this life. And, you know, again, a lot of times when we see people go through tragedies or leave life early in a tragic manner, uh, it's because of something that happened in, in different lives. And a lot of times it can't even be just, a, you know, hey, I'll go, I'll be uh, the brother to this one person just to give them a little bit of support. But you know what? I'm going to check out when I'm 16, you know, for instance, because I want to be able to have a little time to process and come back to be reborn in a different time frame because I know there is probably going to be some events there that I want to explore and learn and grow from. So I'm just going to come with the mindset that I'm going to, you know, come in order to lend support and affect somebody in a particular way, but not have the intention of having that necessarily a, a, an 80 year lifespan this time because they want to get out in time to process and come back to do something that specifically will be available at a certain point in time. Mm -hmm. Right. It's all about experiences and what we came here to learn, what we came here to do and understand. And, you know, learning different belief systems is a wonderful thing. Learn as much as you can. Go down as many rabbit holes as you want to go because that's nurturing the soul. That's feeding your growth. But at the same time, understand that, you know, you might not agree with something that you're looking at and that's okay you don't have to take that part of that thing on you are here to please you and to help your soul grow so if something doesn't fit right if something rubs the wrong way you have so many different things that you can look at and explore this world is full of interesting stuff absolutely so it's all about a celebration of uniqueness and again uh, of creating our own belief structure and again you take what is good and take what feels right discard the rest because ultimately source is within you so you don't have to look anywhere else and this is why in many traditions the most sacred thing you could do is spend quiet time by yourself just out in nature quiet time by yourself to quiet the mind the reason why this world is structured as it is, is so that you won't have time to take that quiet time for yourself. So you won't have time to spend hours, days, weeks, and years in meditative practices like meditation itself, yoga, qigong, tai chi, uh, pranayama, so many other different mind, body, spirit practices that would bring you revelations in understanding they want you to just simply get wrapped up get on the wheel just like a, a mouse a rat a hamster stay on that wheel you know if you have the need to feel that you're a good person and you're pursuing spiritual things but just by going to church every now and then 
maybe given 10 percent to the church or what have you you know donation here or there you know that's that's basically what so many people do or or nothing at all just to make you feel like you're you're contributing to society you know this this is the sickness of the system that's on the planet and that system doesn't it doesn't basically support a healthy sense of spirituality it's it's often when people get out of the structured and start exploring for themselves that they find the the real them and also that's where they find the real growth mm -hmm. all right I mean, a lot of people have really been put in a position where their belief systems are coming up against things and it's hurting and it's stinging and it's unacceptable and it's painful but where did those belief systems come from it seems like we've been taught them since kindergarten you know yeah again they come from the controllers so you know these these belief systems that are not of the light are the ones that basically teach you that you're worthless and that you deserve eternal punishment that you need somebody else to save you these are controller based systems because you're not worthless you you don't need anybody to save you it, there is no saving you it, it's just a matter of realization and you know discovering who you actually are mm -hmm. and that's one of the most positive things you can do in this lifetime is self-realization it's so freeing and it really really helps once you understand yourself then everything else is so easy to figure out it really really helps Absolutely, and that sounds maybe contradictory and confusing to many people to say, you know, know thyself. And you might think of it in many different layers. But again, the self that we're talking about is that eternal self, which is beyond the body. And it does take time. And if you don't put the effort in, you won't get there. So again, it takes time, it takes practice, it takes a true desire and and unfortunately in this world it's it's hard to find the time it's hard to find the peaceful place it's hard to find a place away from all the technology and the buzz that's meant to interfere with you so you cannot find that quiet still place so you can really discover who you are so we have to prioritize ourselves in any way possible to find that because again you know what does it really mean uh, to save your soul per se who do we who are we even I don't think many people out there even have a clue who they really are they if you ask somebody who are you well um, you know I'm Joe Smith I'm you know I'm a car salesman my wife's Mary um, we live in in Texas no who are you who are you who are you really well uh, I like Italian food uh, you know, there's just, this is the society where we don't even know who we really are. And, you know, there's so many things that can help. But again, it takes persistence, it takes practice, it takes prioritizing. Definitely takes a lot of desire. And usually when people find themselves in very difficult circumstances, they generally go ahead and begin to make these steps to start to understand themselves because they realize everything that's going on around them all of a sudden doesn't make any sense something is just not right and that's usually um, the point where people start waking up and they understand that the system that they're in is not for their benefit so don't be afraid to be the unique you that's you know the point of things and what babaji wanted us to get across was you know belief system it, it make your own whatever that is what feels good to you who do you resonate with again we've touched on archetypes and there are many archetypes out there 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 are archetypes that you know some persons might be seriously drawn to others not at all and maybe explore archetypes explore different mythologies when we've even talked about the ramayana and the mahabharata the bhagavad-gita the hindu holy books that give us these stories just like we have the biblical stories what the guides have always referred to them as is stories there's stories out there to help you it's not like we're supposed to 
from this is coming from the guides the guides are never like well get down on your hands and knees now no no they never say that no never if these are useful stories or they might not be useful stories for you it's an individual thing it's not that you should accept any of this if it doesn't resonate with you just find what resonates with you and if nothing resonates with you create your own story mm -hmm. right you know there there's really no need to be angry at other people we should be more absorbed with ourselves and that doesn't make us selfish it makes it so that we are able to come into this world into this life and do what we came here to do that's okay the path to the higher collectives lies in first knowing yourself and then moving up from there because as we we come to discover ourselves and discover the unifying love behind all things we stop to we start to shed away anything that doesn't really push us on that path ultimately back towards source back towards love back towards compassion and unity but what we got to do first is discover who are you and and, and who do i want to be because it's up to you mm -hmm. right so I, I mean i really hope there was a couple things that you guys were able to glean from this and move forward with it and make your life a little more colorful and a little more pleasurable and a little more understood as always much love namaste namaste